Chapter 38, Flora. Following Clara's funeral, Flora took to the task of cleaning their home. She had received word that although it was uncertain how long the coma would last, she was on the mend. The silence of the evening gave way to clanks, clinks, shuffles, and whooshes. She nearly accepted Arjun's offer when Palma suggested the possibility of her giving a hope speech. He was right. Her mother would be happy. What if that's what her mother would have wanted? That her daughter would stand on that podium and share the truth that caused their father to run away to protect them? She shrugged the thought away as she cleaned. Leaving her mother wasn't going to happen. Eventually, she got to her mother's room, the taxi next door. Her mother clearly left in a rush as clothing and various items were strewn about. As Flora cleaned, she opened the glove compartment to stuff some items in it. There, she spotted a leather bracelet. Frowning, she took it and read the label. To my Flora, may you be fulfilled. Love, Mom. She started trembling. This was what the sewing kit was for. She had been crying so much, yet still, more tears came. She pulled it over her left arm. Now her mother and father were both with her. She peered back towards the cubby hole when she spotted a closed, padded envelope. She pulled it out. On it, in neat writing, were the words, To River, with love, M. It was a letter that her mother wrote for her father. She couldn't tell when it was written. Was she supposed to give it to her father if she became a hope runner? She pictured the moment in her mind, a few months of running into the anomaly, to see and finally give him the envelope. This is what her mother wanted? It strained her as she played with the possibility. She could run. Her mother would be happy. And she could help Palma by sharing the truth in her hope speech. Madeira had given so much to support her. To send a letter between lovers that had been separated by time and maybe even space tugged at Flora's heart. It was a grand gesture that a few months ago she would have scoffed at not anymore. Flora had to run, to get her mother's letter to her father. She texted Arjun and Palma. She would run, and she would tell the truth. The news of the ascendance to a hope runner would be shared in the morning. It was time to say goodbye. It was dark. Sunglasses in the trunks weren't exactly practical, but Flora's succession to a hope runner meant her face was now on every screen. She accepted her role, but the fame made her last errands tougher to navigate with throngs of fans around every corner. With one hand holding a wrapped dog toy, she climbed down a ladder and into a cave. As she descended, she gazed into a giant, brightly lit cavern with all sorts of vegetation hanging about. Her eyes widened at the sight of the walls being adorned with LED screens, lighting up the entire cavern. Rulo, without his shoulder pads, rushed around the corner with Mischief and Saga in tow. Rulo pulled out his phone and pressed a button. The sky suddenly changed to a beautiful, calm night sky. The humidity increased, and a small breeze started blowing through the cavern. Flora looked up at the sky, and for the first time, it felt like the stars were in high definition, not obscured by the dome in the city above them. Beautiful. Thank you for saving me, Flora said, presenting the gift. This obviously can't compare, but it's all I could afford. No, totally, you shouldn't have, Rulo said, ripping up the wrapping paper. His face lit up at the sight of the toy. He threw it into the cave and Mischief immediately ran after it. We heard the news. How's your mother? Is she okay? Saga asked. Flora nodded. She is stable, but still in a coma, she said through a forced smile. If she is as strong as you, which we don't doubt for a second, she'll be up and healthy in no time, Saga said, consoling Flora. She glanced at Rulo before continuing. Listen, there's something you need to know. We need your help and hope that you can help fix our mistake. After moving to my penthouse's apartment, I went through some of the code that we discovered during the hack. Long story short, I discovered that there was a bandwidth limiter in the Mech Institute. It's the Emmers. Saga seemed to struggle a bit. They knew? What Mason said is right, and Esper joined him after I told him about it. It made me unhappy and I felt something could be done about it. However, Esper went mental. The last time I saw him, he said the only way to ensure that no one controls others in this city was to take control away from them. He was very distressed and that convinced him to do something about it. He freaked me out, so I left it at that. So that's how Esper knew. 
Rulo and I knew about the limiter and we knew Esper was planning something, but we didn't want to tell anyone because we were afraid. Afraid that if any of this leaked, we would land in jail. Flora, the Emmers still have the logs. Now that Clara is dead, who knows what will happen? We're so sorry. Now it made sense. Flora didn't fault them. It's okay. We all just try to do our best, she said, unsure if that was the right advice or not. Rulo spoke up. When I heard that Esper went mental, I knew I had to be ready in case something happened. Brave, letting go and conquering his fear of getting into a mech, Flora hugged Rulo. She gestured to Saga to come too. They all hugged and shared their grief. Esper is still missing? Flora asked. Saga nodded. Listen, Flora, we made a mistake. This all happened because we wanted to manipulate the markets. Rulo and I spoke about this, and although we believe that what Esper did was unconscionable, he was right. We heard about you becoming a Hope Runner, and we need you to tell the truth about the Emmers and their limiter, please. They won't believe us. We will accept the risk whether or not we end up in jail. People are dead because of us. Please. It was undeniable. Blurred lines of complexity littered throughout the system. Flora also had a hand in the deaths. I am going to tell the city, she said to Rulo and Saga, them gasping. Palma asked me to. Why? Saga asked. With Clara's death, the volatility in the markets caused the limiter to keep firing away, stealing money from others in the city. That was the last straw for Palma and his father. Wow, Saga said. Maybe the people up there actually have a spine, Rulo jested. Saga smiled. Thank you, Flora. We really appreciate it. A silence followed before Rulo spoke up. I have to know. Did you turn off the stabilizer? Stabilizer? Saga asked. Rulo looked to Flora with a face that asked permission to share. He had kept the secret. Just keep it between you, Flora answered. Rulo explained the situation surrounding Clara, Sonia, and the stabilizer to Saga. Her eyes widened with incredulity. Her face dropped when she made the connection that Sonia lost her sibling. She looked at her brother and then hugged him. What's that for? He asked. Don't expect too much of that, she joked as she pulled back. Flora smiled. In that resolution, she said goodbye. Flora ambled back through the starry night of the cave as Mischief sat with the toy in her mouth next to Rulo's legs. Flora waved goodbye and ascended into the trunks. She met Palma where he spent most of his time, back at the penthouse's library. I have something for you, she said as she unslugged the backpack on her shoulder and pulled out Mech Maneuvers Volume 3. Palma took it and chuckled. <laughs> By the way, I didn't steal it. Wait, you didn't? No. I felt rebellious. I wanted to steal it, but couldn't bring myself to do it. So I just asked the librarian if I could borrow it indefinitely, and she kindly said yes. Back then, I was just angry at my parents for not helping. Flora laughed. <laughs> Thank you. It helped. I'm glad it did. Thank you for helping us. Sincerely. Flora nodded. I owed you one, she said, smiling. Palma took an anxious breath. Is this goodbye? He asked, hands outstretched. I will be back, Flora said, hugging Palma one last time. Either time slowed down, or they held each other for a few seconds longer than usual. It was like the feeling of knowing that the end of a novel was coming. As kids, they used to deliberately let the final words linger in the stories they read, trying to outlast each other and savoring the worlds within. I'll be on the skyscraper, watching. Flora knocked on Argent's hospital ward door. I've come to say goodbye. Argent had not only helped Flora navigate the championship, but also herself. There was a connection between them that at a different point in her life, she would have followed through on a formidable and admirable woman. Argent didn't say anything as Flora moved closer to sit by her side. She held her hand again. I don't know whether I will see you again, Argent started. You will. Argent grasped her hand a bit tighter. Yeah, that's what Armin told me. The reality of that loss hit Flora in the stomach. Argent started becoming more emotional and uneasy. I'm sorry, but at this rate, losing the people I love seems to be a thing in my life. I know this is ridiculous and feel free to ridicule me, but it's true. Flora, throughout our training, I've fallen for you. It was sweet and admirable. Flora felt the same, but the feeling of saying goodbye was hard enough. 
never mind saying goodbye to different timelines where they would have been together. It was ridiculous. Argent was right. But that's sometimes what love felt like. The butterflies in her stomach fluttered in the smell of all the flowers in the room. I'll be back, I promise, Flora said as she moved closer to kiss Argent goodbye. Mom, hi, Flora said, reading a letter she wrote for her mother. The doctors had noted that her mother had recently moved her fingers and that all signs were pointing to a slow, full recovery. Despite that, Madeira did not seem conscious and Flora wasn't sure whether her mother could hear her. Regardless, she kept reading. I don't know how you did it. When you felt so relieved upon receiving the truth about what dad protected us from, it was strange how you managed to move on so quickly. Like your question, that thing that defined you your entire life somehow just disappeared. I know now what I was supposed to learn from that. I put too much weight on my questions. Whether we receive the answers or not, letting go is an option. Despite your challenges, you supported me. I'm going to be a hope runner because of you. I am sorry for hiding the truth. You did not deserve that. I was afraid, but it's not an excuse. Flora said, tearing. She moved to hold her mother's hand. I have your bracelet. It really means a lot. I won't be afraid of wearing it. Nothing means more to me than having both you and dad by my side. I know you might be sad that I will leave, but know this one thing. The biggest reason I want to come back from beyond the anomaly isn't to share the truth or to bring back father, but it's to come home to you, making meals, drafting plans, your support. That will be my North Star. I know it took you a while to kick me out of the nest, but don't worry. You've taught me how to fly. Or should I say, run. I love you. I will bring your letter to dad, I promise. Flora. With that, Flora felt a small tug in her hand. A tiny smile crept up on her mother's face. It was like a tear in a damn wall, ready to spill a deluge of hope out into her. Flora was ready 